let's get into this section. And the very first thing I want to talk about is mindset. You see, the biggest mistake that we make going into an interview is that, well, thinking that this is your only chance. The way you walk into an interview is to walk in knowing that you have many other opportunities. This is just one of them. It's not do or die. It's not pass or fail. If this interview goes wrong and you don't get the job, your life isn't over. So first and foremost, treat everything as a learning experience. And what I mean by that is you go into the interview, whether it's a phone interview or an on-site interview, not expecting a job, not hoping for a job. Don't hope for anything at all. Just go to learn to see where your weaknesses are, to learn about a company. And as with anything, as if you're running code, to check how good your code is. You just want to see how good you are at interviews. So that's the key. This is not your only chance. And if you go into that already, you're going to be less nervous. You're going to be more comfortable. It's going to help you out a lot. I know it's silly. I know it's one of those things that we all know, but really do that. Don't go into an interview nervous and thinking that, you know what, if I don't get this, then I'm not good enough. No, this is just another practice, another day at the office. You just trying to get to where you want to be next. Now, what about when you actually go into the interview for the first time? And this is where interviewing is very similar to dating. Your interviewer is more likely to be excited about interviewing you if you're excited as well. Because sometimes interviewers are people from human resources that do this every single day, or it, could, or it could be other coders that are just taking time out of their day to interview you. So you want to make this exciting and fun for them. It's not all about you. It's also about them as well. And they want to see if they want to work with you. This is a little trick that it sounds silly, but it really, really does work. Your goal is to enter the room with a lot of energy, being happy, excited to be there. And this is a classic psychological technique where humans, when we interact with each other, we match each other's energy and energy level. So if you're excited, if you're, you're walking in there with a big smile, ready to get the interview going, it's also going to jolt the interviewer to say, all right, let's do this. Let's have fun. Instead of just going there nervous and scary because the interviewer is going to match your energy. So this is the trick before you open that door, say to yourself, I'm about to go meet a really good friend. Like you've known them for years. And by acting like that, you're going to make the interviewer like you more. Again, it sounds silly, but it is a proven psychological technique. Not only that, but excitement is a signal that you actually want this job. So again, you're walking in about to meet a best friend and you're trying to make the interviewer's day, not bore them to death. And an interviewer wants to ask or answer three questions during this interview. The first one we know, can you do the job? Do you have the coding skills necessary? Do you actually have the skills necessary? But this isn't the only question. You also have, well, can I work with you? Is this the type of person that I want to be coworkers with? Are they going to be fun to be around? And this is a very important question that gets answered during this non-technical questions. And then the third one is, are you going to improve? Because most of the times when you get hired as a developer, you're not going to be a hundred percent perfect match for them. On your first day, on your first week, the first month, you're learning on the job and learning their ways, how their code bases work, how their best practices works, and you're constantly improving. And they're looking for people that can adapt quickly and learn and a year from now become a really valuable asset. The first question, can you do the job? We're prepared for that because we just finished the coding section. We know how to answer difficult technical questions. But these other two, we haven't really talked about them. And again, that's what we're going to cover here. We're going to have the interviewer say yes to both of these last two questions. This is what we call behavioral question. Can I work with this person? Is this person going to be fun to work with? And are they the type of person that's constantly improving? That's going to become better and better. How do we do this? Well, for the rest of the section, I want you to keep in mind these four figures, what four heroes, 
And I know it's silly, it's going to be a little cartoonish, but this way hopefully you remember this. You see, before you enter the interview, you have to have somewhere between two to four stories prepared that I call the four heroes. And it has to demonstrate to the interviewer that you have these four hero qualities that they're looking for. The first one is technical. You want to have a story prepared about your past experience. Maybe you worked on a really difficult project or a personal project that is going to impress the interviewer. A story just for yourself that you know a lot about because you've worked on it and something that shows the interviewer as soon as you tell the story that, oh, this person is really technical and knows their stuff. So that's when we build that one to two big project in our portfolio that we talked about at the beginning of the course. That's when the course, that's when this comes in. So you want to demonstrate that you're very technical and smart. That's the first hero. The second one, success. And this hero story shows you that you're a successful person. If you built something, what did you do? Did you maybe start a little app that turned out to be quite successful and it got a lot of users? Maybe at your past job, you got promoted to a senior level position. You want to have some sort of story that shows you that you're a successful person, not a person that never succeeds in any job. The next one is leadership. Are you the type of person that takes charge, doesn't get told what to do all the time, and can be left on their own? Do you have leadership qualities? And then the last one is challenge. And challenge is they want to hear a story of you going through some really challenging things, maybe a challenging technical problem that you had on a project and how you overcame it. Because you're a type of person that when presented with something that is really difficult, that has no clear solution, you can overcome it. When left alone, you can overcome any challenge. And these four stories are going to be specific to you. So I can't really give you a story to tell the interviewer. Look in your past experiences, and I guarantee you, no matter what level of experience you have, you'll have some stories from your past. It could be from work, it could be from projects, it could be from other things, where you're able to demonstrate these four heroes. The rest of this section, the answers we're going to give, what we're going to talk about, are all going to demonstrate these four heroes. We're not going to say to the interviewer, Oh, I'm a very successful person because I did this. No, we're going to tell these stories that we have. Remember, two to four stories that demonstrate these hero values. And we're going to tell these stories and the interviewer is going to get that we have these four qualities, these four heroes, just through the stories. And if you have these stories prepared before the interview, well then, you can always, depending on what question you get asked, you can always answer your que these questions with some sort of these stories that you have because these stories are already prepared for you. This is where I say that all non-technical interviews sound the same because you have these stories prepared and you just change them up a bit to answer the specific question. But deep down inside, you're just demonstrating these qualities. Remember, these qualities are the qualities that we have to answer the last two questions. And that is, can I work with this person? And are you going to improve? So let's get into it and answer some questions that we might get asked in an interview. A question that you're going to get asked at every interview that you do. Tell me about yourself. What should you say? And I'm going to leave this on the screen so you can just read it on your own. But this is something that should be already prepared and you're ready to answer and really nail it. How can we answer this question successfully? You see, this is the chance for you to steer the conversation in the direction that you want, in the prepared stories of the four heroes that you want. Remember, you're going to direct the rest of the conversation after they ask you this question to what you want them to ask you so you can shine. Some of the key takeaways here. You want to answer this question in about a minute. 
If you go too long into it, well, the interviewer is going to get bored. And if you go too short, then they don't get enough of a chance to get to know you. The key here is for you to, you to tell your hero's journey. How you went from very little skill to somebody that they want to hire. Think of it like a movie. You want to talk about your triggers of success. Within this minute, you want to demonstrate that you're a successful person. You also want to slightly discuss maybe your past projects, your past companies, so that you get asked questions about these projects or past companies by the interviewer. Because keep in mind, the interviewer is going to ask follow-up questions based on this. And when you talk about yourself, maybe it's interesting that you were an origami master five years ago, but it might not matter to the interviewer. So make sure that your stories, your hero's journey is relevant to the job. And you mention some of the skills that you're going to be working with at this job. Within this minute, you want to demonstrate that they will be extremely lucky to have you and how everything you've done in the past makes this a perfect role for you. And keep in mind that an interviewer may not have even looked at your resume. So have a story prepared. Something difficult you did and what you did to solve that and what impact it had. You don't need to talk about your life story, how you went to elementary school, then high school. Just keep it short and to the point, but make sure you stand out from the crowd. Everybody might be able to code in JavaScript, but what did you do that makes you stand out? And that's something that you're going to have to answer on your own. Keep in mind that this type of question, there's different variations on it. Some people ask, walk me through your resume, or why are you leaving your current job, or many other variations. Essentially, they just want to hear the story of why you're here. And as an example, here's what I would say if, let's say, you have zero experience, and you just taught yourself to code, and this is your first job interview. You can say something along the lines of, well, I got really interested in coding a couple years back when I would start this small little side businesses and I would hire developers and designers to build a website or an app for me. And it was always a black box where I would pay this developer money and they'll come back with a product that I was never fully satisfied for. So I started teaching myself how to code because I wanted to know how this black box works. And the more I learned, the more I learned, I became really interested, really engulfed in the programming landscape. And I just started consuming as much information as I can, practicing as much as I can. I started building projects. And then this is where you can talk about some of your big portfolio projects. And all of a sudden, I started writing blog posts about technical subjects that got received very well. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that through these projects and through these posts, every day I'm becoming better and better as a coder to the point that now I feel very confident in being able to be a valuable asset to your team, not just now, but even a year from now, where I expect my skills to exponentially grow. And this is just an example that I came up with at the top of my head, but you see here how I touched on all three points shows that I'm successful, that I've had past businesses in the past, how I've taught myself how to code because of an interest that I had. So I'm a, I'm the type of person who's a go getter. I also mentioned a few things I want to get asked, such as blog posts I've written, maybe projects I've worked on my personal projects that I've put into my portfolio. And I also talked about skills relevant to the job. Maybe this was a position related to web de web development or building an app. And this is something you can tweak. But the key thing is to have this prepared. And remember, you want to stand out. Don't say things that all the other developers are saying or programmers are saying. If you did something amazing in your life, even if it is encoding related, try to work it into the interview. And that way you'll be more memorable. And this is going to set the stage for the rest of the interview. So good luck out there. This is another question that gets asked a lot. Why us? Why do you want to work for us? Why did you choose our company? 
a question that gets asked every time. And any question that gets asked every time, you should be very prepared for it. This is where you shine. And you really have an answer that blows them out of the water. The key here is to make the interviewer feel special. Make them feel that this is your top choice and that this is where you see a long career for yourself. They don't want to hire somebody that's going to be there just for a year. They want somebody who really wants this job and is willing to dedicate years of their life growing with the company. So make them feel special. Make the interviewer feel that you really, really like this company. You admire this company. And also that you respect the fact that they work there. This is the classic question. It's a question where you can give a very generic answer that everybody says and you won't stand out. And remember, interviewing is all about standing out, not doing what everybody else does. So a typical answer to a question like this, well, a really bad answer to a question like this will be something along the lines of, well, I just uh, saw you guys on LinkedIn and I needed a job uh, to make money. That is a terrible answer. So never say that. A better answer is something along the lines of, well, you know, I've been uh, researching your company for a while and I noticed that you're doing some work on X. And I have myself have done some work in the past uh, similar to this. And this is what I learned about it. And then you can go on with that. And then you can say something along the lines of, and I think the problem of X is really interesting. And I think it's something that's something that I can add value to, but also learn and become better at. And again, this is just an example, but the idea here is that you're going to blow them out of the water. They expect you to give a generic answer, but instead you talk about a specific problem. You talk about the fact that you did your research. Perhaps you talk to other developers on at that company through LinkedIn, or you read one of their recent blog posts and you understand what kind of problems they're trying to solve. You answer this question by demonstrating that you have those skills. You mention some of the key words that they have in the job description, but also demonstrate that you're not like the rest that just wants a job and they're applying to a ton of companies. Tell them that you specifically searched companies and found this company interesting because of the type of work they do. It shows that you want to grow, want to grow and it also demonstrates that you'd be great for this job because you've worked with some of their problems in the past. And this might remind you of, yes, the four heroes. You talk about the technical aspects and how you worked on similar things that they're looking for. It shows that you're the type of person who's successful because, well, you're actually going out and researching and, and not just applying to companies blindly and waiting for any company to accept you. It also demonstrates leadership because you went out on your own and read their blog posts, talked to their developers to make sure that you understand what the company's needs are. And then it also talks about challenge, how you worked on similar problems and you overcame them, or you think you can help out. And by this point, you should start to see a pattern. We're always trying to use the four heroes. We're always trying to stand out and we're always trying to be the best version to the interviewer. Now, before I end this video, I want to add a quick note here. And that is part of the question might come with the follow up question by the interviewer, which is why did you leave your job? Why do you want to work for us? Why is your last job not good enough for you that you want to move? Everybody has different answers here. But the one thing that you want to be careful of is no negativity. They don't want to hear you complain about your coworkers, your boss, the ugly co-base that your last company had. Be as positive as possible. Just say that you want to grow. You want more challenge. You want to work with people that are really smart, like they have this company. No negativity. Be as positive as possible and show how you just want to grow. You just want to learn from the best work with the best and you are the type of person that can be put in any situation to succeed. And at this moment, and this company is your answer.
Let's talk about another question that get asked a lot in interviews. Tell me about a problem that you had and how you overcame it or how you solved it. Again, a very common question. How do you answer this? Well, we should know this by now. This should be prepared. We should be ready when they ask this question or any variation of this type of question. Ideally, you have a big project from a past company that you worked with or a personal project that you can answer this with. Again, going back to our portfolio and how we want to have one to two big projects so we can answer questions like these and also impress the interviewer. Now, with these type of questions, we want to use something called the SAR method, S-A-R method. That is situation, action, and result. When asked this question, we start off with the situation. We tell the interviewer, this is how the project was. This is the problem that we had. This is the situation. The second part is the action. What did you do to solve that situation? I did this. I wrote a piece of software. What did you do? How did you try and solve? And then the result is what happened after you took that action. The number of users increased. The performance of the website improved. So SAR, situation, action, result. This shows exactly what the problem is, what you did with the problem, and how you solved it. And you see over here the second point. We want to have metrics and numbers. If you're able to give numbers to the interviewer, it sounds impressive. If I say I improve the performance of a website or I increase the number of users, that doesn't sound impressive versus saying something like the website performance improved by 50% or, or we increased our monthly active users by 30%. Again, something that you can prepare ahead of time in your stories. This is why when I talked about the portfolios, we want to focus on big projects versus many small projects. Because when you get asked this question and your problem is that you had a difficult time building a to-do list app or a small little app, it's not going to sound impressive. That's what everybody else does. Instead, talk about a real problem. And that's something that we've built in past courses where we talked about difficult problems such as caching, scaling, performance, security. And these three over here, scaling, performance, security, are really, really good things to talk about. If you're able to use one of these of how you improve security, how you improved performance, how you improved scaling, it's going to be really impressive because all companies have these problems and they want people that can solve these type of problems. You have to be careful here. You can't just make up stuff or say things that you cannot back up. Expect that once you answer this question, the interviewer is going to ask you more details about it. So if you improved caching in the app to improve performance, you better be sure that you're going to get asked how you did it in more details. So be able to answer those. But again, with enough preparation, this should be fairly easy to you. As a side note, if this problem happened to be with maybe a teammate or your work team wasn't performing well, don't be negative. Again, never place blame on clients or coworkers or bosses. Just simply state the problem and say how you helped solve it. People don't really want to work with complainers. They want to work with people that just get to work, to work, solve problems, and move on. Keep in mind, don't be robotic when answering questions. Be human. And a good way to think about this is if you saw yourself on TV answering this question, will you like yourself? And that's really it. So go out there, have this question prepared because you're for sure going to get asked this question. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, I lied. There's one last thing. And that is, you're going to get a variation of this question, such as tell me about an interesting project you've worked on. And they're very similar. The goal here is to talk about an impressive project to wow the interviewer and tell them how A, you're different because you're building these interesting things, but also how you've worked with what the company is looking for in the past. So you've worked with JavaScript, you've worked with C Sharp, you've worked with C++. 
whenever you're talking about a project, about a problem you solve, always want to bring it back to what the company right now is looking for. Because at the end of the day, that's what they care about. They care about, can you solve the problems? So again, 